Welcome back to My Rubber Heart, where we dive into the fascinating world of rubber and all things elastic. I'm Mari, and today we're going to tackle a question that might seem simple at first glance, but it's actually quite complex. What's the difference between rubber and plastic? Buckle up, because we're about to embark on a molecular adventure. Let's start with the basics. Rubber and plastic are both polymers, which is a fancy way of saying they're made up of long chains of repeating molecules. But that's where the similarities end and the differences begin. Rubber, or as scientists like to call it, a thermoset elastomer, is like that friend who once they make up their mind, there's no changing it. Once rubber is cured, it's set for life. On the other hand, plastic or thermoplastic is more like that flexible friend who's always up for a change. You can melt it, reshape it, and it's ready for a new adventure. Now, let's zoom in and take a look at their molecular structures. Imagine rubber as a giant 3D spider web. Its polymer chains are all cross-linked, forming a network that gives rubber its amazing elasticity. This is why when you stretch a rubber band, it snaps back to its original shape. Pretty cool, right? Plastic, however, is more like a bowl of spaghetti. Its polymer chains are, are either straight or slightly branched, but they're not connected to each other. This is why you can melt plastic and reshape it. Heat it up and those spaghetti strands start sliding past each other. But how do we make these materials? Well, rubber starts its life similarly to plastic through a process called polymerization. But then it goes through a special step called vulcanization or curing. This is where the crosslinks form, usually with the help of sulfur or other curing agents. It's like baking a cake. Once it's done, you can turn it back into batter. Plastic, on the other hand, is made through various polymerization processes. Some plastics grow chain by chain, which is called addition polymerization, while others form step by step, which is called condensation polymerization. The end result is a material that can be melted and reshaped multiple times. Now, let's talk about how these materials behave. Rubber is the gymnast of the material world. It can stretch to impressive lengths and then bounce right back to its original shape. It's also a tough cookie when it comes to heat, maintaining its properties over a wide temperature range. But remember, once rubber is cured, it cannot be melted and reshaped. Plastic is more varied in its behavior. Some plastics are as rigid as a board, while others can be quite flexible. Unlike rubber, most plastics will change properties as they heat up, and they can be melted and reshaped. This is why you can recycle many plastic items. When it comes to properties, rubber is like that durable, flexible friend who's resistant to just about everything. It's great at standing up to wear and tear, impact and fatigue. It's super flexible and resilient, and it even resists many chemicals. This is why we use rubber for things like tires, seals and hoses. Plastics, on the other hand, are a diverse bunch. Some are tough enough to use in bulletproof vests, like polycarbonate, while others are more brittle, like think of a cheap plastic fork. Their flexibility and chemical resistance vary wildly, depending on the type of plastic. So where do we use these materials in the real world? Rubber is the go-to for applications that need elasticity, durability, and temperature stability. That's why you'll find it in tires, where it needs to grip the road, resist wear and tear, and perform in both hot and cold weather. It's in the seals of your refrigerator, keeping the cold air in despite repeated opening and closings. And it's in the hoses of your car, flexing and resisting the heat of the engine. Plastics, with their ease of processing and wide range of properties, find their way into countless applications. That water bottle you're drinking from? It's probably made of PET plastic, chosen for its lightweight, transparent and easy to mold properties. The bumper on your car? Likely polypropylene, selected for its toughness and impact resistance. And that food container in your kitchen? Probably polyethylene picked for its durability, chemical resistance, and cost-effectiveness. The choice between, between rubber and plastic often comes down to the specific needs of the application. Need something that can stretch and return to its original shape repeatedly? Rubber's your best bet. Looking for something that can be easily molded into complex shapes and mass-produced? Then plastic might be the way to go. 
Now let's break it down some more with a few simple examples. Think about the tire. It needs to grip the road, flex as it rolls and withstand the heat generated by friction. Rubber, with its high elasticity, durability and temperature stability, is perfect for this job. A plastic tire just wouldn't cut it. It wouldn't have the same grip, it might deform permanently under the weight of the car and it could melt on a hot day. Now consider a plastic bottle. It needs to be lightweight, transparent and able to be molded into a specific shape with a screw top. Plastic, particularly PET, which stands for polyethylene terephthalate, fits the bill perfectly. A rubber bottle would be heavier, probably not transparent and much more expensive to produce. Or think about the gasket that seals your kitchen faucet. It needs to create a watertight seal and withstand repeated compression and relaxation as you turn the faucet on and off. Rubber's flexibility and resilience make it ideal for this job. A plastic gasket might work initially, but it would likely deform over time and start leaking. On the flip side, consider the plastic gears inside the clock. They need to be precisely shaped and maintain that shape over time. Hard plastics like acetal or nylon are perfect for this. They can be molded to exact specification and maintain their shape. Rubber gears would, would be too soft and imprecise for this application. It's also worth noting that the way we process these materials is quite different. Rubber typically starts in its journey in a big mixer called the Bembry mixer or a natural mill. It's then formed into shape by processes like extrusion. Think of it like squeezing toothpaste from a tube or molding, which is pressing it into a shaped cavity. Finally, it is cured using heat and pressure to create those all-important cross-links. Plastics, on the other hand, are often processed using machines called extruders, which melt the plastic and force it through a shaped opening. They can also be injection molded, where molten plastic is shot into a mold cavity or blow molded to create hollow objects like bottles. And remember, because thermoplastics can be remelted, many plastic items can be recycled into new products. In conclusion, while rubber and plastic might seem similar at first glance, they're actually quite different in their structure, properties and applications. Rubber gives us the elasticity and durability we need in everything, from car tires to medical tubing. Plastic, on the other hand, provides the versatility and ease of processing that allows it to be used in everything from food packaging to spacecraft components. The next time you're driving your car, take a moment to appreciate the rubber tires gripping the road, the plastic dashboard housing your instruments, the rubber hoses under the hood, and the plastic bumpers protecting you from minor collisions. It's a perfect example of how these two materials, each with their unique properties, work together in our modern world. Remember, in the world of materials, it's not about which is better, rubber or plastic. It's about choosing the right material for the right job. And that, my friends, is what makes the world of polymers so fascinating. Thanks for joining me on this molecular journey. Until next time, keep stretching your imagination and molding your knowledge here on my rubber heart. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode.